In this video, I'm breaking down three viral text effects that are helping creators blow up right now. And there's actually a science behind why these effects work so well. It's called psychological triggers. Stay with me. See, when viewers keep seeing certain text animations show up in viral videos, their brain instantly connects it with professional trending content. So when you use these same effects in your videos, your content automatically just seems more legit. It's low-key a hack for growing on social media. So today I have three text effects that's going to upgrade your content and I'm going to show you how to do it in DaVinci Resolve. And if you don't have the time to watch this whole video, then I've linked the presets down in the description. Let's get started. Okay, so the first effect that we're gonna talk about is the inverted text effect or the negative text effect. And this one is by far the easiest one to do. You could probably do it in literally like 15 seconds. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the first thing is you wanna grab a clip, right? Here we have this beautiful clip of my wife uh, overlooking the Atlanta skyline. And what you wanna do is you wanna grab a text plus effect and you wanna drag it over the clip. And so what you want to do is obviously you want to change the text up. I'll put negative here. I might make it bigger. I'm going to change the font. You get your font, you get the sizing right. And then all you simply have to do is come over here in your expector panel and go to settings, composite. And you want to change the composite node from normal to, you can do two. You can either do difference or you can do exclusion. They pretty much give you the same effect. So I'll, I'll just click difference here and um, that's it that simple. All right, next up, we have the blur text effect. And this is one I've seen popping up recently that I've really enjoyed. And also this one isn't that hard to create, but you do have to dive into fusion. I know fusion is a scary word for a lot of people, but it's really not that intimidating. And this is a really easy text effect to create in fusion. So I'm going to show you how to do that really quickly. So the first thing you want to do is you want to drag in a fusion composition like so. I already have one on here. I'm just showing you how to do that. And then you want to open it up. You can drag over the fusion composition and click down here at this fusion icon. And what it's going to do is open up the fusion window. So the first thing you want to do is you want to bring in a background node. You want to connect it to your media out node. So you have a background. Now you want to turn down the alpha channel here on the right hand side so that your background is transparent. All right, next we want to, we want to add in a text node. So we're going to drag in a text node and connect it to our background node. And you'll see it creates a merge node. We're going to uh, type in some text blur effect and we're going to size it up just so we can all see it clearly so essentially what we have now is just some text the next thing that we want to do is we want to add in a blur because this is how we're going to get this blur effect so what you can do is hit shift and space and then you want to type in gaussian blur and you want to add that in and so as you can see our text is really blurred and so what we want to do is keyframe the blur effect so that it you know, it starts blurry and it becomes more in focus. And then on the way out, it becomes blurry again. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set a keyframe at the beginning for the ultimate or how blurry we want it to be at the start. And so typically 0.4 is fine, but I think I had it at like 0.5 to make it just a little more blurred. And what we're going to do is here on the right hand side, click this little diamond to set a keyframe. Now what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead about say seven frames and we're going to bring the strength back to zero so that our text is now in focus so if we play that back as we can see our text goes from blurry to in focus so we'll go to the end of our frame and we'll go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and we'll say 12 frames from the end we'll set a keyframe and then we'll drag it all the way to the end and go back to 0.5 so that it blurs on the way out. And so if we play this back, it goes from blurry to in focus, stays in focus, and then gets blurry again. So that's our blur effect. Now what we wanna do to make this a little more smoother is go up here to the spline section. We want to click on strength. We wanna click on this icon here so that we can see all the keyframes in this window. We wanna hit Command A for Mac, and I think for Windows is Control A. It's been so long since I've had a Windows. And then we want to hit S so we can kind of smooth out these handles. If we play it back now, you see that blur effect is a little more smoother. It isn't, it's not, it's, it's not as uh, abrupt. So now we have the blur effect and we could stop there, but we're not gonna stop there. 
So the next thing that we want to do is we want to close the spline window. We want to animate the opacity. So not only does it blur in, but it fades in and it fades out. And so what we're going to do is we're going to click on our text node and we are going to transform the opacity. And so one way we can do that is we can go up here to the shading tab and down here to it says white solid fill. So that's checked off. So what we're going to do now is at the same keyframes. So at the very beginning, we want our opacity all the way at zero. And then we're going to go ahead seven frames and we're going to key our opacity all the way back up to one. And let's make sure that took. Boom. So not only does our text blur in, but it fades in. And then we want to go back down to the end, go up 12 frames from the, from the end of the clip. We want to add a keyframe at our opacity. And then we want to go back to the end of the clip and drag the opacity down so that it fades out. And there you have it. Boom. Okay, so our last effect is really two effects. I want to show you two things that you can do in DaVinci Resolve to just upgrade the quality of your text animations. The first one is I want to introduce you to something called follower. And what this allows you to do is to make animations to the individual characters and words. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. So here we have some text queued up. To access the follower, what you want to do is you want to right click in the text window and you want to click on follower. And what you'll notice is that up here at the top right, you'll have this tab called modifiers that's all of a sudden now available to you. And so we're going to click on modifiers and it's going to look similar to the text window here. You still have your text, your layout transform, but you have this new thing called timing. And we're going to talk about that first. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to stretch each character over time. The way we want to do that is one, we want to keyframe the size, right? And we want to keyframe the size on the X axis. Let me go ahead seven frames and let me move the X slider. So if you see, as I move the X slider, the words start to stretch horizontally. And so what we want to do is we want to get like a slow stretch and I'm going to make this happen over time. So let's say I'll, I'll jump ahead 24 frames and I'll do it like that. So we get a small, a slower cool so that's like with any other animation but with the follower function you have something called timing and the timing allows you to set a delay on how this animation is applied on each character so if i move this up a little bit watch what happens so as you can see there's a delay between the stretching of each character so i'm going to make this maybe about 0.4 like that right so that's just a cool little animation another thing you can do outside of using the follower is you can get your text to, let's say float, a floating text effect. And so what we want to do is that after merge number two, we want to hit shift space and we want to add in a transform node. All right, so in order to add this floating effect, we want to modify the center X and center Y position of the text. So how we do this is we right click here up here on center X and Y, we go to modify with, and we go to perturb. And if you watch it back, all of a sudden the text is flying all over the screen, right? So we need to change some of these values so that it's more subtle. So we need to modify some settings. So I'm going to go up here to modifiers and we're going to change some values here so that we can make this effect more subtle and make it seem like it's floating. So the first thing I want to change is the X, Y scale. I'm going to change that to 0 0.25. I'm going to change the Y scale also to 0 0.25. And I'm going to change the strength to 0 0.2. And then we're going to like look at the speed a little bit. And we're just going to dial that in until we get the effect that we want. So if I play it back now, as you can see, it's a subtle wobble, right? It's actually pretty good, but we can, you know, adjust the speed if it's going too fast, if it's going too slow. I think I like it here, but I might drop it just a little bit to 0 0.5 to make it a little more subtle. All right, if we play this back over some, you can see the text is just slightly floating. So those are the three effects. If you just want to skip all this and you're like, hey, Charles, just give me the presets to install. Then I've put a link in the description for the Vowel Creator text pack. Go ahead and grab that. It'll save you some time.